Hey everybody, welcome back to the Serving Pleasure Podcast. Exotic Erotic. With your hosts, Wesley Corpola and Bailey Schultz. Orientalism is a way of seeing that imagines, emphasizes, exaggerates, and distorts differences of African, Arab, and East Asian peoples and cultures as compared to that of the West. It often involves seeing cultures as exotic, over-sexualized, backwards, uncivilized, and at times, dangerous. Hello, everyone! Hi! Welcome back to Serving Pleasure Pleasure Podcast, Podcast. Exotic Exotic Erotic. (laughs) The hard K at the end. Mm, The hard CK. CK, yeah, we add a K. Louis CK, endorsed by Louis CK. Mm -hmm. Um, He's our sponsor of the day. Thanks, Louis. (laughs) Big, big howdy doody to Louis CK. He told us we had to say that. Mm, Exactly that way. In case... Uh, you are noticing a uh, difference in quality of audio. It is because uh, the college library has given away its one microphone to someone else um, to check out and use. Which is kind of weird, I thought. Um, like, a little, like, okay. Yeah, definitely. So, I think I'm speaking on behalf of both of us when I say that uh, Serving Pleasure Podcast Exotic Erotic is denouncing college library for all of its services Mm -hmm. um and its ill will towards this podcast specifically and and we encourage you to boycott them as well um boycott the hell out of them even though they're in your segregated fees most likely if you are going to school here just write on the receipt please don't give to Please don't give to college please, library. Please give to, only to Memorial Library. Only to Memorial, all right? We need those cages to be fixed up a little bit. Yeah, not all of them have locks. The name of this podcast is... The Sequel. <laughs> it's exotic erotic, The Sequel. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... Let's just... Plug along. Let's not waste our listeners' valuable time. Yeah, I know you guys are really busy. Oh yeah, I'm sure. So let's just hop into chapter three. It ended chapter two ended on kind of a saucy kind of uh, sexual raising. assault uh, uh, esque end. So let's see if all of our worst fears come to fruition. Chapter three. Sharif did not understand why, after all these years, he was suddenly seized with the desire to possess a woman. Why, at this perilous time, when he needed to stay alert, and why this defiant woman? From the moment he'd held her in the car, Holly had aroused a response like no woman since Yona. And now, in the rise and fall of her breasts, as she stared at him, he read a rising passion that matched his own. She was fighting her desire in vain. He knew from his younger days what it took to seduce a woman, and this one lay within his power. All it would take was the touch of his lips against her face and throat, and the hard, commanding movements of his body, and he could bring them both to ecstasy. Oh, wow. Very self-confident. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's good. <laughs> Holly's eyes widened. With fear or longing, or both? Don't, she whispered. Please. She was, the sheik reminded himself sharply, another man's bride. She was also a threat to his ability to take his son back to Al-Qadar. Stiffly, he drew back. You have nothing to fear. I told you, I am not an abuser of women. And you really don't know what's happened to my sister? Even at this tense moment, Holly Rivers was more concerned for the missing woman than for herself. He saw with reluctant admiration. (laughs) I wish I did. Sharif bent and ran one one finger along his son's cheek. It would be easier to straighten out this mess if she were here. Unless she intended, as I feared, to seek custody. I don't know what she intended. The young woman brushed back a wave of red hair that had fallen across her temple. I haven't seen her in three months, since before Ben was born. 
Then how did you get him? A friend of hers brought him, a musician named Griff Goldbar. <laughs> he said she would come back in a few days. That was over a month ago. About that time, the clinic owner had stopped taking Zahad's calls. Such a coincidence must be meaningful. Do you know a woman named Noreen Wheaton? No. Why? She's the head of the clinic that hired your sister, he said. If you've been searching for Jasmine, surely you found some record of the surrogacy arrangement. Holly's expression grew troubled. Jazz must have taken her contract with her. I cleaned out her room, but there weren't any papers from a clinic. The baby began to squirm. I think he's hungry. I'll give him the formula. <laughs> Sharif went to fetch the bag that Aunt Salima had packed. As he crossed the cabin, he wondered why the clinic director had been reluctant to talk to Zahad. Had there been threats against the clinic? And if so, from whom? With the police after him, Sharif could hardly contact Mrs. Wheaton to ask her directly. Or perhaps he was looking in the wrong direction. The woman, Jasmine, might have been enemies of her own might have enemies of her own. Her disappearance might bear no relationship to Sharif or to the clinic. On his way back to the alcove, he tuned the television set to an all-news station, grateful that, in California, even remote cabins came equipped with TV service. At the moment, however, the report concerned local politics. My great-aunt provided these supplies. He set the bag beside Holly on the bed. She and my cousin, Amy, will care for the child when I get home. You're not married? In the filtered light, the woman could have passed for a teenager. And Sharif Likey. <laughs> My wife died many years ago. To cut off further questions, he presented her with a can of formula. Is it necessary to heat it? Not really, Holly said. Do you have a clean bottle? I would scarcely bring a dirty one. He handed it to her. How long will that last? There's enough for two feedings, so maybe half a day. Is this all you've got? There are two more cans. Obviously, it would not be enough. So hard we'll get more. After filling the bottle, the woman settled the baby at the same angle Salima had demonstrated. Sharif wondered whether women did these things by instinct, but he knew better than to ask an American woman. Do you have a phone? She said. Sharif patted his robe. Oh, I wondered if I could call my fiancé, she said. Trevor must be going crazy. Trevor. Ah, yes, the athletic blonde man in his 40s who had crossed the courtyard that afternoon. Sharif no longer believed Holly had manipulated her groom, yet she didn't speak of him as if she were in love. Her reasons for marrying were, however, none of his business. I am sorry to put you both in this inconvenience, he said. However, the police will be monitoring his telephone and might be able to locate us. Even though it's a cell phone? It is possible. He said. The technology is developing rapidly. What year is this from? <laughs> Obviously pre... 2000. NS okay. Yeah, pre-9-11. Wow. From the TV, the word kidnapping drew his attention. A picture came on screen, a blurry, angled shot taken from overhead. It showed Sharif, Zahad, and Holly getting into the car. A security camera in a strip mall captured this scene earlier today in Harbor View, where a bride and her nephew were abducted minutes before her wedding, said a woman's an a woman announcer's voice. The victim has been identified as Holly Jeanette Rivers, a hairstylist from Harbor View. Her sister, Hannah Jasmine Rivers, vanished three months ago. Hannah Rivers is the mother of the kidnapped baby. A security camera? Sharif cursed under his breath. Neither he nor Sahad had considered that possibility in such a small row of stores. The picture changed to computer-enhanced close-ups of Sharif's and Zahad's faces side by side, like a wanted poster. He realized the camera must have taken numerous shots during their hour-long surveillance. Police say the men in the photograph have been tentatively identified as Sheikh Sharif Al-Khalil and his aide, Zahad Adran, from the small Arabian nation of Al-Qadar. 
How, he wondered, and then realized the camera must also have captured the license plate on the rental car, which could be traced to a subsidiary of the Barim Corporation. With that information and those pictures, it wouldn't take long to make an ID. A spokesman for the State Department told our station that the Sheik is not in uh, the country on official business and has no diplomatic immunity, the announcer said. It is unclear what connection he has with the Rivers family. Sharif had known he ran a security risk four years ago when he relinquished his powerful post in the central government to devote himself to the well-being of his province, but he had never anticipated such a situation as this. al Qadar's president, Sheikh Abdul Durad, was an old friend. In his 50s, the president had fought for freedom alongside Sharif and Zahad. However, even he could not retroactively grant diplomatic immunity. On TV, the anchor woman sat at her desk beside a blonde man in a business suit. We have with us Trevor Samuelson, the fiancé of kidnap victim Holly Rivers, she turned to him. Mr. Samuelson is an attorney in Harbor View and would like to say a few words to the abductors. Just don't hurt Holly or Ben. The man stared into the camera. Whatever your quarrel is, if you want money or whatever, we can work this out. His expression was earnest, but restrained. <laughs> like a soldier stoically facing battle, Sharif thought. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Samuelson. Now, for yeah, a look no at problem. how... <laughs> now, for a look at how long this rain is going to last, and how much accumulation we can expect. Holly wore a guarded expression as she fed the baby. During Trevor's appeal, she'd shown no sign of longing for her betrothed. What was she thinking? And why did she keep sneaking sideways glances at Sharif? Did she too feel this urge to touch? Her <laughs> tenderness toward his son formed a bond between them. A man and woman who shared a baby usually also shared the intimacy of their bodies. But she was not the mother, the sheik reminded himself. And she was not, and never could be, his woman. Uh. The mobile phone rang. After muting the TV, he answered it. Zahad spoke in... Baharalik. Baharalik. Baharalik, an ancient language that survived only in Barim. Oh, uh, did you see the newscast? Guess I'm... I am angry with myself. I should have spotted the camera. We may still be able to resolve this matter, Sharif said. Since the mother is missing, I doubt we face a custody battle. Only charges of kidnapping! Exclamation point! Holding the baby against a cloth laid over her shoulder, Holly was rubbing his back with circular motions. She appeared to pay him no notice. Into the phone, he said, I hope to persuade the woman to drop charges. She has accepted that I am the child's father, and she did leap into the car of her own free will. I doubt she or the authorities will see it that way, grumbled his cousin. I don't think it wise to trust her. Zahad was a genius at intrigues, but sometimes, Sharif had learned, the shortest distance between two points really was a straight line. Nevertheless, we need to get my son up quickly. If I can persuade her to plead our cause, it might help. She will lie to you, warned his aide. Perhaps, he conceded. I will have to use my judgment. I would rather you use your wits, Zahad said. Although, I admit... You have reason to doubt my advice now that we have been shot at and photographed all in one day. I do not doubt you, Sharif said. You are my other self. <laughs> Ooh, maybe a possible sex scene coming on between these two. Ooh, incest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. As you are mine, I will call as soon as I learn anything from my sources in al Qadar. So far, they have uncovered no rumors of a plot. The sheik rang off with a silent prayer of thanks for his faithful relative. 
Although they had attended Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Although they had attended different universities while exiled during their country's dictatorship, they had trained together at a military camp and they had both shed blood in the war of liberation. There was no one he trusted more than Zahad. Perhaps the man was right about Holly. Perhaps she would lie in order to liberate herself, then betray him. But he had to try and win her over, for his son's sake. Holly wished she were an expert at languages. If only she knew what the men had been saying. At least, according to the newscast, Sharif had told the truth about his identity. He really was a sheik, and he'd given her his true name. Did that mean he was being honest about jazz? That he hadn't harmed her? That her sister really had become a surrogate to raise money for a demo recording? It was, Holly supposed, the kind of impulsive scheme that Jazz might get involved in. But surely Sharif knew more than he was telling about her sister's disappearance. She bit her lip. Nothing in her quiet life had prepared her to deal with this brooding, complicated man. At least the effects of the medication had worn off. She felt tired and sore, but her brain was functioning. You must be hungry. Lamplight etched shadows into the man's face. I guess so. She tried not to think about Trevor and the wedding reception he'd planned at his favorite restaurant. Oh, what a guy. That is like Pizza Hut. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, what? Wait, what? I'm at Pizza Hut right now and my wife's not here. (laughs) I want them, their wedding cake was just a pizza with a, like, a tiered, like, a tiered pizza. And then there was, like, the wedding topper. But it was on just Trevor. On the on the and he was on the personal pizza. on the personal pizza on top. Yeah. Yeah, and just Trevor. It was just it's just Trevor eating stuffed crust pizza. Crust first. Yeah, he's holding it backwards. Mm-hmm. In the corner kitchenette, the Sheik opened a refrigerator. His broad shoulders blocked Holly's view of the contents. At last he swung around. We have plenty to eat if you like Middle Eastern food. That's fine. Holly had eaten at several exotic (laughs) restaurants with Trevor, although she couldn't remember much about the food. Do you know how to cook? I like how it was already broad with Middle Eastern. And then it got, we went to exotic. It could be anything at that point. Yeah. (laughs) Only over a campfire. Oh, Oh. oh, man. (laughs) Yikes. The sheik removed a platter. (laughs) Fortunately, this could be microwaved. <laughs> oh, man. Anyone can use a microwave. <laughs> Even a savage like the sheik, yeah. right? A sense of unreal- unreality teased at Holly. Was she really about to eat dinner with an Arabian sheik in a robe and headdress? As he moved around the kitchen, the white she's fat... So fixated like, why on is that. that what she's fixated on? Not, why am I really going to eat dinner with someone who just kidnapped me and my baby? And it has a strange sexual tension with me. God! <laughs> As he moved around the kitchen, the white fabric molded itself to his powerful build. She wished she weren't so aware of Sharif's leashed strength and the smoldering way he studied her when he thought she was unaware. For one traitorous moment, she wished that, for one night, she could be someone other than prosaic Holly Rivers. <laughs> then sh- that she could yield to instincts sh- that she didn't understand and couldn't possibly justify. No, she must not think that way. She must set her mind to escaping. The man had said that they were in a canyon. Even in paved over Orange County, there remained wild wilderness areas with thick undergrowth inhabited by coyotes and mountain lions. Did she really dare to take the baby out there? Gazing down at Ben, Holly saw that he'd dozed off. Gently, she settled him on the center of the queen-size bed. The bell on the microwave indicated their food was ready. Her mind still mulling the dangers of an escape, Holly stood up. Without warning, the world began to spin, and she groped shakily for support. Swiftly, Sharif reached her side. As he caught Holly's arm, her knees went weak, and she had to lean against him. (sighs) The drug must be affecting your balance, he said. It will help you to eat something. I thought I was over it. Glancing up, she found his face close to hers, his gaze filled with concern. She knew she ought to be frightened, but instead she felt relaxed, trusting. Stay in bed and bring the food here. His low tone (laughs) vibrated through her. No, 
Holly didn't dare fall asleep again. They needed to talk. The more she knew, the better her chances of getting out alive. I want to sit at the table. I'll help you. One arm encircled around her waist. As the sheik steered her across the room, she detected other thicknesses of cloth beneath the white fabric. So he was dressed under his robe. The realization highlighted how little she knew about him or his culture. At home, do you live in a tent? Or a palace? Or what? She asked. I don't know much about Al-Qadar. Or about sheiks either. Yeah, you never would have guessed. A tent. Her jaw, his jaw worked, and she realized he was suppressing a smile. <laughs> okay, she probably did sound like an idiot, but how was she to know? I believe the what word is research? racist. <laughs> Xenophobe, I believe, is the correct word. He smiled, though. He found it endearing, <laughs> apparently. Oh, so cute. <laughs> I live in a palace, and we have all the comforts of home. Supporting her with one arm, he pulled out a chair at the wooden table. Most of al leaders are educated in the West. We must be able to bridge two worlds, preserving our traditions while meeting the industrialized nations on their, other, on their own terms. You certainly speak English well. She sank onto the chair and immediately missed the comfort of his nearness. Where did you go to school? At Columbia, New York. He took a seat opposite her. So I'm familiar with your country. I'm hoping that he's wearing a Columbia sweater underneath his robe. And he, I wish he was flashing it right now. He's oh, like, my God. We'll I take a to look. Columbia. I'll take a look. <laughs> this is my new favorite line that I've said so far. New York is only one small part of America. She's yelling at him for saying he understands America just because he lived in New York for a little while. That's part of the back and forth. You know, like, she doesn't understand him, and he doesn't understand her, but somehow they make it work. (laughs) Right? We'll see. We sure will find out. (laughs) Let's Let's read read on. (laughs) I have traveled through most of the states. He said. The dramatic landscapes of Utah and Arizona are like nothing else I've ever seen. And some of your cities exert a unique... Charm. Holly felt more provincial than ever. She'd seen less of her own country than this foreigner. He dished some food onto her plate. Inhaling the aromas, Holly found that she was really hungry. She really was hungry. (laughs) For a while, they ate without speaking. Under the table, the sheik's legs brushed hers. Although he moved them away, she was left with an impression of muscle and sinew. Tell me exactly why you kidnapped Ben, she said. You were afraid of a custody battle? Exactly. The practices of your law system do not always tally with those of my country, he said. We hoped for a quick getaway. But now that your plan has failed... It hasn't failed. It has suffered a few setbacks, he replied. We incurred what you Americans call the double whammy. (laughs) I just want to, I'm going to say that line again. We incurred what you Americans call the double whammy. <laughs> the old one-two. <laughs> pa <Pa-pa. laughs> We got shot twice, first by a camera, and then by a gun. Double ah, ah, ah. whammy. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> you never explained who was firing at us, she said. Do you know? Not for certain. As Sharif ate, she saw that the nut- <laughs> she saw that the backs of his hands bore thin, straight scars, as from knife wounds. <laughs> I have enemies. Right into the spittoon. From my- <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> I have enemies from my country's fight for freedom. It is also possible that your sister has enemies. Jazz hangs out with some strange people, but as far as I know, they don't carry weapons. What kind of strange people? From a plastic bottle, he poured mineral water into two glasses. I'm glad it was specified that it was mineral water. She's an amazing author. Musicians! With their long hair and disorderly lifestyle, Jazz's colleagues had little in common with uh, most people Holly knew. 
Maybe they only seem strange in Southern California because they're more interested in making music than money. Your sister was interested in money to make a demonstration recording. I uh, I just want to hear the demo. I want I want the demo lyrics to be. I want them to pop in a CD or like a mixtape. Did you get this from a secondhand store? Yes. Because maybe it did come with a CD. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm I'm even open to just having the lyrics be provided, and then we come up with the tune. Maybe there aren't lyrics though. Maybe it's just like. Some of that new electronic music. She's experimental electronic. Yeah. <laughs> She's like the Brian Eno um, <laughs> Southern <of> California. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but perhaps we can make a bonus podcast in which we We make, make the yeah. song. Yeah. Hmm. No promises, but that's probably going to happen. Sharif, I don't want to promise that. <laughs> I said no promises. Well, you said it's probably going to happen. That's not a promise. I said no promises. I don't even want to go that far, though. It's an idea. Shut out. Leave it at that. Go. <laughs> Read. <laughs> Sharif reminded her. I wish she'd told me, Holly said. I would have loaned it to her. Or Trevor would have. He manages my parents' estate. Not that it's worth much. But he's always come through in a pinch. How much did you pay her? A hundred and fifty thousand dollars, Sharif said. She choked on her food (coughs) and had to wash it down with water. (coughs) A hundred and... Jazz got that much? No, only half was paid in advance, and the clinic took a share, he said. I presume she received something in the order of thirty or forty thousand (laughs) dollars. Ding, ding, ding. She left $11,000 in her checking account, Holly said. I'm sure she spent some money on living living expenses and maternity clothes. She must have taken the rest with her in cash. And you truly have no idea why she left? She shook her head. No, I don't know why she sent Ben to me either. Perhaps that musician friend of hers was involved, he said. Ten or twenty thousand dollars would be a fortune to him. <laughs> I, I just love the idea of him Sharif <laughs> being on GSN. Whoa. Uh, him being on the show, Whammy. No whammies, no whammies, you no whammies. Press your luck. <laughs> well, then they made a remake called Whammy. Wasn't it called Double Whammy? It might have been called Double Whammy. I don't know. Look it up. Comment. Tell us what you think. What? Tell us what the name of that show was. The remake and the original. We know the original was called Press. Okay. Holly, Will you read? Holly pictured Griff, whom she'd known casually for years. An easygoing, talkative fellow. He played drums in an alternative rock band. It's adding up. <laughs> with which Jazz sang. Okay, so we know oh. that Jazz's song. Well, the Brian gonna... Eno did sing as well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he'd had a minor drug conviction a few years back, and he'd managed to avoid it. Uh, he managed to avoid being questioned by the police since she reported Jazz missing. Pot. He smoked pot. Nevertheless, she couldn't imagine him hurting her sister. If he were up to something, why would he give himself away by bringing me the baby? She pointed out. The sheik finished eating. <laughs> <clears throat> I do not know. I am grateful that at least he put my cell in good hands. Holly's cheeks warmed, and she hurriedly changed the subject. I think she left of her own free will, but then something prevented her from coming back for Ben. I've been so worried. I hear you're concerned that something has gone wrong. He said slowly. This Noreen Wheaton, the director of the clinic... M- might be afraid of someone, or she is playing a game of her own. He pushed back his chair and walked to a leather suitcase. From a side pocket, he drew some papers. Here's a copy of our contract with the clinic. I brought it to prove that the baby is mine. Perhaps you will see something in them that I have missed. The papers bore the name of the Crestline View Clinic. The legal terminology covered such issues as privacy and liability. Holly studied the signatures at the bottom. Sharif Al-Khalil, witnessed by Zahada Drawn, and Noreen Wheaton, witnessed by someone named Manuel Estrellas. 
Do you know anything about this man Astraeus? she asked. The sheik took a seat beside her. Oof, a clinic employee, I presume. She scanned the contract again. Why isn't Jazz's name on here? We were told she signed a separate contract with the clinic, Sharif said. But she knew about you, right? Holly returned the document to him. I mean, that the baby was going to be raised by your aunt and your cousin? You make it sound as if there was something wrong with my arrangements. Holly plunged in. I just don't believe Ben will be happy growing up without a mother. A tightening of the sheik's mouth indicated that she'd overstepped her bounds. <laughs> I would not have arranged to have a son if I could not provide him with a proper home. Tears pricked Holly's eyes. I just don't want to lose him. His harsh expression softened. <laughs> have you considered what will happen when your sister returns? He said. By your own account, she is unreliable, and you could not prevent her from reclaiming the child. What kind of life would he lead then? I've been trying not to think about that. Staring down at the table, Holly took a deep breath. <sighs> she reminded herself that Trevor wanted to marry her, and there was no reason they couldn't have children of their own. But those children wouldn't be Ben. They wouldn't be the baby who'd opened the floodgates of love inside her. The sheik brushed a tear away from her cheek. To lose this child would hurt you very much. All she could do was nod. You are a woman who lives for others. He murmured. What then is left for yourself? I don't need anything for myself. It seemed so obvious that she was surprised when she had to explain it. What more could a person want than to ensure the happiness of the people she loves? His hand cupped her chin. The roughness of his palm testified to a hard life, and yet his fingers stroked her jawline as lightly as a whisper. Let us reach a sensible agreement, Holly Rivers. One that is a truly, that is truly best for all of us. An agreement? She allowed herself to meet his gaze. I propose that tomorrow you and I go together to the authorities, he said gravely. You mean you'll turn yourself in? As soon as I find a lawyer, yes. He studied her. Will you promise to explain that you entered my car of your own free will? She nodded. Of course. It's the truth. I will present the contract and show that I have only taken my own son. He said. It is a gamble. But I doubt they will press charges. It would be the fastest way to resolve this situation, and for us to get away from whoever is trying to kill me. Then what happens to Ben? Tears threatened again because she knew the answer. You must admit that you will be better off with me than with you or sister, said the sheik. Also, in compensation for spoiling your wedding, I will pay for a private detective to search for her. For a crazy moment, Holly contemplated offering to go to al Qadar and take care of Ben, just to keep him close, this child of her heart, <laughs> to give him a mother, after all. But what place could she have in a land so unfamiliar? She doubted she could find it on a map. Yeah, we all doubt that she could <laughs> find it on a map. <laughs> Doubts tore at her. What if... What if Sharif was tricking her in some way? The contract might have been altered. Maybe nothing was as it seemed to be. She'd never had to deal with such a situation before. If Trevor were here... But of course, he wasn't. She needed this man's trust, and her deepest instincts told her that he would never, under any circumstances, harm Ben. All right, she said slowly, still not certain she was making the right decision. If everything is as you present it, I agree not to fight for custody. Outside, the rain settled into a steady, lulling pattern. The long day, the full meal, and the lingering effects of medication must be taking their toll, because Holly found herself fighting a yawn. It's I like how they medication. keep calling it medication. <laughs> it's not medication. You need sleep. It <laughs> brings the, the rag back out. It's a medication. It's a prescription from Walgreens. <laughs> taking her hand, the sheik pulled her gently to her feet. 
At the bed, Holly curled beside Ben. She was only vaguely aware of Sharif tucking the covers around them. You really shouldn't lay on a bed with a baby because you can roll over and crush it. Actually, I I think I've seen research that actually disproves that. That the likelihood of that happening is actually very, very low. Really? Yeah. In 2000, though? <laughs> was, was, that research, was that research out in 2000? No. That was probably when the big that... hype was going around of not doing it. Or maybe it was after that. I feel like it was after. Can you cut this whole thing out so I don't sound stupid? <laughs> Uh, but we'll maybe see. I want to sound smart. <laughs> we'll just leave your parts in then <laughs> and take mine out. She awoke to semi-darkness and the scents of wood smoke and baby powder. Rain pattered on the roof while across the room the TV glimmered. Its sound turned low. A flash of lightning showed Sharif dozing at the dining table, his head cradled on his arms. Sleep appeared to have caught him unexpectedly. <sighs> Beside Holly, the baby murmured and nestled closer, crushed by the weight of her body. (laughs) Slowly, she began sinking back into slumber. A quickening in the TV announcer's tone barely penetrated her consciousness until she picked out the words body and woman. The fears of the past few months returned in a flash. Sliding from the bed, Holly hurried to the set. Cool air nipped her shoulders above the crumpled wedding gown. Oh, I forgot she's been wearing a wedding gown this whole time. (laughs) Above the crumpled wedding gown, and the wooden floor chilled her stockinged feet. Why is she wearing... The victim, believed to be in her mid-twenties, was found by off-road bikers in the desert, said the announcer. Police haven't released her identity. On the screen, paramedics loaded a blanket-covered body into an ambulance. When they tilted the stretcher, the blanket fell back to reveal a bare arm. The camera zoomed in on a small tattoo, a botanical cluster of four-petaled blooms. Holly recognized them at once. They were jasmine flowers. (laughs) (laughs) End of chapter three. Oh man, my eyes are probably on my skull. They what really a are. Put them back. That's gross. <laughs> so no sex happened. But lots of tension. Yes. Lots of seeing people's body through their clothes. Uh-huh. It even opened with uh, Sharif anal- analyzing her breasts. Yeah, the word breasts. Got to whip that one out. Um. There's the occasional very racist. There was mainly like the one, like the one part that we already kind of addressed. Yeah, there wasn't anything new, nothing new to offer. I'm just worried that they're just never gonna go to Alcadar. I want them to get out of the United States, and I I want them to go to Alcadar. All I'm saying is, I have a feeling that since at the beginning of the book, the map only has this ambiguous Uh, Southern California area. I mean, think of all the places we haven't been to the Anaheim Motel yet. Or was that where we were? I don't know. I'm sure there's lots of places we haven't oh, been we to. We have gone there. Polisentio Restaurant. University? <laughs> it's California State University, Fullerton. But I wish it just said that. Um, oh, his cabin? Is that the safe house? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Who do you think is the dead body? I don't know. It's anyone's guess. I'm hoping it's Noreen. (laughs) I'm not hoping it's Noreen, actually, because I want... I have a good voice ready for Noreen. I'm so excited for Noreen. You're preparing it? Yeah. I've been practicing it in my mirror. I hope it's Sharif's cousin, Amy. Because why does he have a cousin named just Amy? I don't know. I've always been... I just want to meet Amy. I do, too. But, like, we won't meet her if she's the dead body. Yeah, but she just has, yeah, yeah, I suppose, unless she comes back to life. I'm, yeah, I know. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I just want to figure out why, what's the importance of Amy so much? Amy gets name dropped once a a chapter. Like a lot. Once a chapter. (laughs) Oh my cousin, Amy. (laughs) (laughs) Always the same structure. Is that Zahad's wife then? It might be Zahad's wife. I think that it is. Yeah, I don't know. I'm interested to meet her unless we just don't i think that if she, she just name drop i feel like she would have been listed in the like cast list 
Patty well, is Smith. she? I don't think so. Oh, maybe she is. Maybe we made fun of her in that list. I don't think so, though. Yeah. <laughs> She's not on the list. Okay. So, this Azar. Manuel Estrellas is on the list. We're gonna so, meet we're going to meet him and Noreen, most likely. Although, so is Jazz is on the list, too. But she's like... She could not be, I guess, even though she's fucking dead! Possibly. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty heavy-handed that that's who that was. All it said was it was a woman's body with a tattoo of Jasmine flowers. Yeah, but it was like Holly recognized it right away, which means, like... But uh, she might have other friends with Jasmine flower tattoos. I mean, I guess I can't argue that it couldn't possibly be no, like, anyone else, but I just... It, it, I, I do understand the, the very heavy-handed use of the tattoos being Jasmine Flowers, and that it's possibly Jacqueline is Jasmine. A, is, Jacqueline <laughs> is a genius, you know, like, who would have thought that a girl named Jasmine would have Jasmine Flowers on her? Also, that obsessed with her name. <laughs> weird, weird that, like, they said that they weren't going to identify the body, but then it was like the camera zoomed in on this tattoo that was like hanging out. out. Yeah, like, yeah. Like the cameraman wants someone to do some <laughs> sleuthing. <laughs> or the cameraman specifically is like, oh, Holly will recognize this. <laughs> or it's Jacqueline behind the camera. <gasps> Jacqueline is behind the camera. Mm-hmm. In more ways than one. Or I'm also thinking that this body is going to be a fake Jasmine. She's gonna be, uh, she's gonna That's be messed. Soba. She's gonna be messed up beyond recognition. On her face. Yeah, but the tattoo will be added to this whoever it is. Ooh. Amy. It'll be added to Amy. Uh, at some <laughs> point. It's like Jane Doe. Her name is just Amy. <laughs> um, Specifically, my cousin Amy. <laughs> I think I think Jane you're Doe. giving Jacqueline a lot of credit. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll yeah. see. So far, it's been pretty when, how run much, of the mill. How much longer do you think that they can resist the tension? How many chapters? Uh, well, things kind of de-escalated from the last chapter. So I think the next one's going to get steamy without quite getting there, and then maybe the one after that. Yeah, maybe they'll just, like, make out a little or something like that. Um, maybe they'll just, like, spit into each other's mouths. Or maybe they'll just have sex. Just, like, a little bit. Just, just, just like a, almost. Yeah. <laughs> just barely. <laughs> just barely qualify you. Not, just enough that like a seventeen year old cheerleader would still consider herself a virgin, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That much. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Not <laughs> much added from this chapter, just kind of moving the plot along, just trying to keep up with the pace of it. I really did enjoy getting the chance to be a news uh anchor. I did enjoy Sharif saying double whammy that at was, one point. That, that was a good part. Yeah, And exactly. I did like Holly trying to compare the fact that she couldn't find the country on a map to the fact that he thinks he knows America just because he's seen New York, even though he's actually seen more of America than she has. Yeah, or uh, her asking Sharif, so do you live in a tent or a palace? Oh, As if he Jesus. can't live Any, anywhere else. In like a house. Like, yeah. it's, it's either, you're either... What you about know. a mansion? He could live in a mansion. Why is it a palace? Yeah. Or just a house. Like, he, I mean, yeah. I guess he's a sheik, so she would assume. But why would you say... T- Holly's an idiot. Yeah, <laughs> at least Holly, she acknowledged Holly's it at one bigot. point. At least at that one point she was like, I know I probably sound like an idiot, but how am I supposed to know? <laughs> like... And at least finally, yeah, they she acknowledged it finally, and Sharif also acknowledged that she's an idiot, although he's not offended by no, all these offensive things. No, he has not been offended things. at all. He is just... He finds it endearing, yeah. Yeah, well, that's one word. <laughs> he's, still, he's still hot for her. Yeah. It, so it seems. <laughs> so he explicitly seems. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm picking up on some subtle, you know... And there's something going on between those two. I I don't know yet. I don't know if anything is between them. We've made a lot of assumptions. Yeah. And, like, Let's who go knows? through the rest of this book with an open mind. Open mind and just, like, anything can happen. Just let it happen. Just, like, naturally Let all the racism just, just happen. Just let it happen. Talk about it later. Immediately. But, yeah. Uh, so keep writing in. Um, getting We're getting tons, a, lo- a lot tons of letters. Of great feedback. A lot of great postcards. The post oh, and the family photos. Honestly, it's been really touching. Oh yeah, 
Uh, and also just having our faces photoshopped into the family photos. It's what we've always wanted. It's a little creepy, but I like it. But you guys know what we like, mm. and we like that. We like the creeps. All right. So, uh, any final words before we go? Oh, double whammy. Double whammy, and that's it. Thank Bye. you. Double whammy.